Live, live, live. We're going. We're happening. And we are live. Hey, everybody. How you doing today? It's Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. Welcome to the show here out of Creston, B.C. in Canada. How you guys doing today? Nice to have you along. Uh, today is July the 25th. It's Wednesday, hump day, right in the middle of the week, the work week for some folks out there. Uh, for me, I, I work every day, so you know every day is a holiday here. Uh, how are you guys doing? Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're staying warm. And I, I'm led to believe that uh, it might be that the worst of the weather has sort of uh, left uh, Florida and the East Coast and is a little bit offshore right now. I'm kind of hoping for you guys. Maybe the rain has calmed down a little bit. Uh, I don't know about the temperatures. Hopefully, they're getting better for you. We'll see what uh, what gives. But thanks for uh, checking in with me, telling me where you're watching me from, what's your high temperature today, and uh, saying hi to Traveling with Bruce. Uh, if you've never been here before, this channel is all about cruising. We love talking about cruise ship vacations. We love talking about uh, traveling in general, of course. And so any questions you have about uh, gen general travel or, or cruise ship vacationing, cruise lines, new ships coming, um, what ports you want to consider visiting, what to do at certain ports that you might be visiting, um, areas you're thinking of going to, you're thinking of taking a, an Alaska cruise, you have questions about that. You got questions about taking maybe a Mediterranean cruise or what's a repositioning cruise or what are you allowed to take on a cruise ship, what aren't you allowed to take on a cruise ship? Bring those questions in here. Uh, that's what we're here for. I'm here to answer that uh, those questions as best as I can. If I can't answer the questions on the spot, my viewers here who are signing in, saying hi to me right now, probably can answer them. And if you stump us all, well, maybe by tomorrow we'll have the answer for you. It's no big deal. We'll figure it out. Uh, so welcome, newbies. Uh, anyone who's uh, new to my channel, welcome to the channel. Right now we have 2,419 subscribers. We've added a few more since yesterday's show. Welcome to the new subscribers uh, to, the, to the channel. I'm well, glad you're here. And again, if you're new, uh, say hi to us. The gang here will say hi to you right back. And... Uh, we welcome one and all to the discussion. Uh, this channel is growing. Uh, and uh, later today, I am ready. Uh, I have been working all morning today. I've been on it since about 6 this morning. Uh, I have just finished editing the uh, video that I've been talking about now for about four or five days or so. I have a video with um, seven other YouTubers who have chipped in to help me out. Uh, we have put a video together and we are launching it. I'm going to release this video in uh, about a half an hour after this broadcast is over. So uh, later tonight, check it out on my channel. You're going to see a video that took me about a week and a half to put together and um, had to get clips from all kinds of people. And then I had to do a bunch of editing. And uh, well, I hope you like it. We had a lot of fun doing it. I had a lot of fun putting it together, actually. It was a lot of fun. And uh, I've been chortling away <laughs> for days because I get to see these clips again and again and again. Anyway, it, it's just great. I really want to thank uh, uh, some YouTubers out there for helping me out. I'm going to mention them a little bit here in the show um, and let you guys know who's involved in the video. Uh, we, we had some, uh, I got some really good help from some really good people. I really do appreciate it. And uh, I had a number of people I, I also reached out to uh, to see if they might be interested. And I, I asked about another four or five others, but for varying reasons, uh, just wasn't able to happen this time around, but uh, maybe next time I can get some more YouTubers involved. I want to do more collaboration videos with fellow YouTubers out there. I welcome YouTubers to come to this show. Say hi to us. Uh, I'm more than happy to give you a shout out. Not a problem at all. I'm not, uh, I'm not one of those channels that doesn't like other YouTubers on their channel. I is an open house here. We love talking about cruising and, and cruise ship vacationing and traveling in general. And if there are YouTubers out there who are in the travel game and want to say hi, by all means, pop by and say hi. I love it. Uh, uh, special shout out to some of my favorite channels. Uh, Casey Neistat, if you're watching, uh, you're always welcome to come by and say hi. <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think Casey's going to be coming by today. I, I uh, He's, he's got 10 million subscribers. He's kind of busy right now. Uh, but I love Casey. Um, uh, who else do I really love? Oh, uh, Caravan Caroline. Uh, Caravan Caroline, I know you don't watch YouTube. You just make YouTube uh, videos, and uh, you live in a van, uh, sometime down by the river. But uh, uh, Caroline, I love Caroline. Caroline, she's a gal, great gal, and she's on the road all the time, living full-time in her van and posting videos all the time. And I love that channel. I just love it. Uh, I just uh, follow her adventures and, and uh, she's so honest with what she's doing. Uh, I think she's great. She's, she inspired me. She's one of those people that inspired me to do this. 
Uh, and then there's Eric and Jax. Uh, oh, man, I love uh, Nomadic Fanatic. Uh, some, some of my viewers don't like Nomadic Fanatic. I love Nomadic Fanatic. Uh, Eric and Jax. Eric doesn't watch YouTube either. He's behind the wheel. Uh, he's, you know, he's living, living in his RV. Full-time guy. Uh, love his channel. And uh, he inspired me big time. Big time inspire from uh, Eric. So Casey, Eric, and uh, and Caroline, all three of them, um, is a big reason I'm here. Uh, I wouldn't have uh, thought of this uh, uh, to do this because I thought to myself, well, geez, you know, if Car if Caroline and and Eric can make daily videos, practically daily, not every single day, but I think Caroline does one almost every day. I'm thinking if you guys can do that uh, on the road in a van or in an RV where there's spotty, you know, spotty uh, internet and so on. What's my excuse? I've got uh, theoretically high-speed internet, although some of you know it's not always high-speed here. But lately, it's been pretty good. Um, I've got pretty reliable internet. I'm in the living room of my house. What's my excuse for not being able to produce a, a YouTube video? Um, and so that really pushed me over the edge to give it a shot, to give it a try. I care, 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 Caroline, we're kind of the same age. So I can't say, oh, she's young and she's only 25 years old and she has all that energy. Oh, no, I can't use that excuse. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, so anyway, I, I say hi to those folks and um, I want to say hi to my other peeps. But first, I'm going to say hi to my viewers who are signing in right now and have been signing in for a little while. We've got 30 viewers here. Welcome one and all. Tell me, where are you watching me from? What's your high temperature today? Uh, <clears throat> by the way, yesterday, a record day for this channel. I, I cannot, I still can't believe it. I had more donations come in yesterday on my PayPal account, on the donation account, than I ever had before. I think it was like six or seven of them came in in one day. I usually get one here, and a couple of days later, one or two come in, and you know, it's 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 infrequent, but it happens. And I, as you know, I thank each and everybody for <laughs> helping this guy out stay on the air. Yesterday, I think we had seven of them. I thanked everybody yesterday, and thank you again. Some folks are helping this channel by buying merchandise, traveling with Bruce, TWB, uh, T-shirts and coffee mugs. All kinds of neat stuff. Thank you for that. And uh, there are some folks on Patreon who are doing monthly contributions to this channel through Patreon. And the advertising. Some of you are watching advertising now on my videos. You see ads from time to time. I am monetized by the good folks at YouTube after a 120-day wait period between being monetized, not being monetized, and being re-monetized. I'm so glad to be back into the family. And all I want to do now is grow my views and grow my subscribers and grow the advertising revenue and Keep, keep keep this thing going because this is my full-time job. Let me pull my computer in a little bit more. Keep the picture kind of symmetrical if I can. Eh, you know. And uh, I can now read my phone right here. I can stand it up right by my computer screen. And I can say hi to everybody who's saying hi to me. Richard C. started it off at 4.05 today. Hi, all. Another day of rain near Philadelphia. So the rain is still hanging around over there. Peter Heckema, good afternoon, Bruce and all. Another beautiful day in Tarquin Springs, Florida, 92 degrees and lots of sun. We enjoyed your trivia show last night. I'm glad you did. Uh, I, I, I kind of want to apologize for the last question I had last night. It was basically the... Um, name the busiest cruise ports for cruise passengers in the world. I had like 63 of them. But it didn't have any uh, Asian ports, and it didn't have Australian ports, and there were a lot of gaps in it. And uh, you know, I'm going to kind of try and do another one someday that's a little more accurate and has a, a better global feel. But you guys did really well. I think I think the gang picked off out of 63. I think they picked off 45 of them in about 10 minutes. It was fantastic. Uh, the remainder, some of them were obscure names and. Anyway, worked out okay. We had a good time, though, and uh, as always, we always do, Tuesday nights and Thursday nights, we play trivia here. Saturdays at 2 in the afternoon, I'm on, uh, of course, I talk cruise ship and a little trivia at the same time. We have a good time with that. All right, Peter Heckema, good afternoon, Bruce and all. Uh, Robert Brandt, hi, Bruce and everyone, 85 in St. Thomas. Uh, the Carnival Glory with 2,984, and the uh, Oasis of the Seas with 5,408 are on board, are in port today. So look at that. Um, what does that come up to? 83, 8,400 people practically, 8,400 on a, on a hot July day are in St. Thomas. Uh, this, is, this is the low season, July, and uh, there's that many there. Robert, that is awesome stuff. I think they're picking up a few beers and a few uh, spritzers and a few coolers, and uh, business should be good. Uh, so way to go, buddy. Peter Heckema, hi, Paul. Um, uh, we've been on the Allure, which is the sister ship of the Oasis, both are amazing ships. Uh, Peter, St. Thomas is a really active cruise board. Robert Brandt, yes, it is because of the, the tax-free status and duty-free 
status. And I think it's because it's beautiful. And uh, Robert, you're absolutely right. It's gorgeous there. It looks absolutely fantastic. Peter Hegema, there must be at least one or two ships nearly every day. Uh, most days in summer, we have one, sometimes two. <clears throat> but in the high season, <coughs> that would be winter, four to six a day. Four to six is typical. That's like the Cayman Islands. That's how you can have 1.7 million people a year going through St. Thomas. Uh, that's the same for St. Martin, same, uh, same for uh, for uh, Cayman Islands. Uh, you need that many passengers, that many ships to offload that many passengers to equal 1.7 million a year. That is serious business. Pretty good stuff. Uh, Peter Heckema, we uh, we are there in November on the Symphony of the Seas. And uh, Peter St. Robert St. That'll be great. Uh Let's see. Uh, uh, Peter's asking high season being January to May. Uh, he's kind of, Robert's saying, no, November through the end of April. Kind of that's our high season. Robert Grant, May and June are sort of the transition because there are a ton of weddings uh, here, a lot of weddings in June. Peter Heckham, are really looking forward to our cruise in November. That should be about the end of hurricane season. Robert Grant, yep, it should be. After Halloween, it's always safe around here, he's saying. Um, uh, maybe a rainy day, but uh, rarely hurricanes uh, at that time of year. Fantastic. Peter Heckema, today with all the straight weather around, uh, you can never tell. Well, strange weather around, you can never tell. That's true. Uh, Tom Henry, uh, hi, Peter. Robert Richards, 75, and stormy in, Rich stormy in Richmond. Hi, Tom. I'm hoping the storms are moving off the uh, coast for you guys. Um, everyone's saying hi to everybody else. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Tom Henry, I did the Caribbean last November over Thanksgiving week. Uh, just had issues from the fallout of prior storms. St. Thomas was a moving, uh, uh, you know, it was a, it was a, it was it was moving. It was tragic. It was sad, sad to see. Uh, Robert saying we are still recovering, still building. Um, Tom Henry, a poor bride was to be married in St. Thomas. Then our port changed to St. Lucia, so she changed her plans. What are you going to do, Robert Brandt? People don't seem to understand. We got hit by two Category Five hurricanes a week apart, and a Category Five is as bad as it gets. Really bad stuff. The first caused damage. The second finished off what couldn't be secured. Absolutely. Um, that was bad. Tom Henry, then a week before the week cruise, we switched back to St. Thomas, and she couldn't get her party to St. Lucia or get her deposits back. It's uh, too it's too bad. Um, Tom Henry, she was on my excursion to St. Kitts, so it was a bit ragged. <laughs> Wendy Thompson is here. A rain early today to 89 today with a new – our new stove came today. Tomorrow, a sofa and two comfy chairs. Hello, everyone. Never been to the Med yet, but I think we all watched and hoped St. Thomas would be okay. Uh, welcome to Wendy Thompson. I know she's moving into her house in the, um, in the Ocala, Florida. Excuse me, Ocala, Florida area. She's a new Floridian, and uh, she's settling in. This is fantastic. Robert Grant, St. Thomas, St. John, St. Martin, Antigua, and Barbuda, as well as Puerto Rico, took the worst of the hurricanes. Uh, they sure did. Tom Henry, I understood that. Uh, I understood that Robert was surprised. We actually went. To your island they actually took us there robert grant we were surprised the ships returned so soon when there was very little for the passengers to see um did you get off the ship is the question peter heckham was saying let's hope the hurricane season won't be as bad this year some of the islands haven't recovered from last year robert saying the last the largest hotels haven't reopened and won't until 2019 to give you an idea how bad the damage was it's a two-year shutdown before they're reopening uh, because it's total and complete devastation, which means to rebuild, you have to gut the rest of it. You got to bring it right down to its foundations, make sure the foundations are secure or redo the foundations and rebuild from scratch. Two years, you have to bring everything into the island. There are no local uh, cement shops and uh, uh, tree uh, uh, logging companies nearby. It's all brought in by ship and it has to be uh, figured out by the engineers and the architects exactly what it is you need. A lot of the wood is uh, generally pre-cut and then finished off there. It is a serious, serious job. And when you want to build a five-star, six-star resort, got to be done right. You can't hurry something like that. It's not like you're slapping together a mobile uh, type unit or, or a, uh, you know, a, a compartmentalized kind of <laughs> resort. These are one-offs and they're beautiful. So yeah, big money, lots of time, uh, Personnel have to be flown in and housed to build. Uh, you got your contractors here, your expert laborers, your 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 general laborers you can get, but the skill guys you might have to bring them in. Uh, this is a big deal. Ed Tollison Jr. Hello everybody. Hi Ed. Paul Willigus. Hi Bruce and all. Seventy six and sunny here in Virginia today. Welcome Paul. Welcome Ed. Richard C. Hey Ed. Brittany is here. Hi Bruce and all. Hi Brittany from uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Randy Lucas. Greetings Bruce and all. Another hot day in the ridge, on the ridge in Paradise, California. Today, it's 1 
502. Holy moly, that is hot here in Creston. Sunny, gorgeous, probably 85, 86 degrees. I'm staying indoors with the fans going, got the air conditioning going, and uh, keep the show going. <laughs> Tom Henry, uh, yes, I did snorkel. Uh, remember the pics? So Tom did get off the ship. He did a little bit of snorkeling when when they did visit St. Thomas. But, uh, boy, I'll tell you, I know, I know Tom was telling me that when he got back, he was saying that, uh, you know, the main street, they had done a lot of work on it. But one block behind or two blocks behind, boy, it was pretty devastating back there. He knows. He knew when he left the island. It was a two-year minimum total rebuild. And if that's even if anyone, everyone went right at it, um, I'm sure a lot, of a lot of folks on the island are economically ruined or badly damaged economically, and it may take longer than two years to come back. So that's how these hurricanes can just destroy an economy for a long time and harm it terribly. So anyway, there you go. Brittany Lockwood, it is 93 degrees uh, with a feel-like temperature of 99, and it is partly cloudy. That is hot and uncomfortable. No question about it, Brittany. Stay cool down there. Um, Nina, Nina, Nina is here. Nina, hi, Bruce. Today is uh, 95 here in San Diego, 15 miles from the coast, 24 days till my birthday. Tahiti cruise. Fantastic. Start packing. This is great. Maurice is here. Hi, Bruce. Since the ovation of the seas is moving to Alaska, would you be surprised if they move quantum of the seas out of China? Uh, they are, they're talking about moving quantum uh, down to Singapore. Uh, they've already announced it, actually. They are taking Quantum out of Shanghai full-time. Uh, but I believe the spectrum of the seas was slated to go in when the Quantum came out. Uh, but with the latest developments now with Chinese cruising and cruise lines pulling out their premium ships, we'll have to see if the spectrum actually goes there. Um, it may well be that, that Royal Caribbean doesn't even deliver the spectrum to uh, China However, um, if, I, if I've got my facts straight, I hope I do, if the Spectrum of the Seas was going to go to China, it's being built right now as we speak, all the signage on board that ship will be for the Chinese market, uh, Chinese, English, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, so if they're going to change their mind and not take the Spectrum there, uh, they're going to have to make adjustments at the uh, shipbuilding yard. Uh, and they're going to have to go back to their contractors who make all the signage, all the safety notices, all the menus, all the the signs that hang on the inside of your door, your room door, cabin door, all the uh, the, the little plaques that they put in the bathrooms to tell you not to, you know, don't stick a fork in this socket kind of warning label. All that stuff's got to be changed. Uh, they may have to do that now. Uh, that may delay the launch of the ship. I don't know because uh, they have to pass safety standards for whatever market you're going to. If you're bringing it to the States, the Americans are going to say, hey, we don't want Chinese language uh, for the tourists here, for the passengers to uh, to try to understand for safety reasons. We want the muster drill and, and all the escape routes and everything labeled clearly in English. Since you are visiting U.S. and Canadian ports, we have, we're kind of funny that way. Uh, so that might change things up. We'll have to see how this goes, Maurice. Uh, um, things are in flux over there, big time. Big time changes from two years ago to today. Not what they expected. The cruise lines were not expecting what's been happening lately there. And so making adjustments for the future. Wes Morrison is here from New Braunfels, Texas. How are you, buddy? Uh, high of 99 here in New Braunfels. Wes, stay cool. It's just relentless. Iskew Park. Hi, Bruce. It's Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. It's 18 Celsius. A bit cloudy and off and on rain today. How is everyone doing? We're doing great, Iskew. Uh, you're doing okay at 18 Celsius. Geez, that's like high 60s, uh, not even 70 degrees. Probably not hot enough for you, I suppose. But uh, you're not getting what some of these other folks are getting, like Wes Morrison, 99. Tom Henry, Randy, move to Paradise uh, PA. It's cooler and just down the road from uh, Intercourse PA. That sounds like a fun place. Oh, my goodness. Uh, sea Keeper, hi, Bruce, and all. A 90 degrees Fahrenheit and a nice summer storm here in Tequisa, South Florida. Good day to catch up on some computer work. I managed to get some work done. Yay, he says. Anxious to see your collaboration video. About an hour after I get off the air today, I will have it launched. And uh, you guys let me know what you think. Uh, hope you give it thumbs up. Hope you like it. Paul Wilgus uh, at uh, Tom Henry. So you go from intercourse to paradise. Hmm. Or do you go from paradise to anger? No, you go. Never mind. I'm not going there. Okay. Ruthie B is here. Hi, Bruce. Haven't chatted with you in a while. But my husband, Steve, watches daily. 
uh, we are getting excited for a Disney cruise out of Galveston in late November. Fantastic, Ruthie B. I'm glad you're here, and that's exciting stuff. Um, that should be a pretty cool cruise. Is that a one week cruise, a six day, five day? What are you, where are you going? Uh, this sounds exciting. Sea Keeper, thumbs up, everyone. Show Bruce some appreciation. Thank you, Sea Keeper, for the reminder. Uh, thanks, everybody, for giving me thumbs up today. I do appreciate it very, very much. It helps the analytics in YouTube. Uh, it makes them promote the channel more if they see positive action. I love it. Uh, Maurice, uh, Bruce, I'm really thinking of doing live videos on YouTube. Any advice? Oh, my God, Maurice. Um, uh, I would, uh, you know, I encourage you to do it, but uh, I also encourage you very strongly to uh, watch some videos uh, by the influencers. There are a lot of YouTube influence guys that that tell you how to be a better YouTuber. I watch them all the time. There's a bunch of them. Uh, just uh, just enter YouTube, uh, you know, uh, how to do live videos or whatever, and you will get all kinds of advice and uh, ideas and recommendations and you may want to really look into that because I had to do that for months. I thought of going live in November, but I didn't go live until January and I was doing daily videos already and I didn't go live until January and uh, I, you know, I just kind of went, well, if nobody watches, nobody watches. But my thought was I'll just talk to this camera, this computer, and it'll be a regular video anyway, because after I get off the air, it becomes a video. And I thought, well, you're just making videos on a daily basis in one take. Uh, so let's see how it goes. And so that's how I started. And that was my mentality then. And now the, the, the channel is growing and the numbers of viewers are coming on. Right now, 47 viewers are here live. And this number sort of fluctuates. Uh, people come and go after 5, 10, 20 minutes, whatever it is. And uh, by the time I go to air, uh, there's 100, 120, 140, 160 views. And within 48 hours, there's 200, 300 views, it all you know, all depends. Uh, if I talk about something controversial or whatever, maybe it's more, maybe it's less. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Uh, boy, Maurice, uh, I haven't got enough time to give you the advice you need, uh, but uh, yeah, I would definitely do some homework on YouTube about that. Um, definitely. Uh, Richard C., it must be very expensive to be to be up on YouTube. Keep up the good work, Bruce. Uh, thank you, Richard C. Uh, well, you know, what it prevents me from doing, uh, being a live YouTuber and being uh, as active as I am with eight shows a week plus whatever I, you know, all my YouTube videos on top of that, and the research for the YouTubes and all the social media I'm working on, I can't do a regular job for anybody else. I can't, I can't even be a 7-Eleven guy buying a counter because uh, I can work five hours to uh, you know, uh, sling coffee and uh, give change for for people buying gasoline and coffee, which I don't want to do that job anyway. I never would. Uh, but there's five hours gone, and uh, I'm 62. Uh, <laughs> I need sleep. Uh, I need rest to be sharp, and uh, that'll just drain me right out. And then I I, I wouldn't even be able to do this channel. Uh, I might be down to two videos a week, three videos a week, uh, trying to make a living that way. I'd rather sacrifice that to do this, grow this channel. Um, and this channel will make me a living. That's that's my game plan. But I'm investing a lot of time into this project, and I'm looking for the payoff as days go by, months go by, years go by, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, I, I don't want to be behind uh, doing that kind of uh, grunt work or anything like that. I certainly don't want to go back into the career I used to be in. The career I used to be in in finance, that's 80 hours a week of dedication as well. I mean, that's a whole other level of stress and everything else. I'm past that. Too old for that game. And so this is so much more fun. I like hanging out with you guys, uh, and I appreciate it very much. Uh, <clears throat> Debbie Manuel, hi, Bruce, and everyone. So miserable in Heatville. <laughs> Let's refer to this place as Chico. Hot, hot, hot at uh, today, uh, 106 for the high today. Friggin' joy, she's going. <laughs> oh, Debbie, hang in there. Uh, I'm so, uh, you know, what are you going to do? It's summer. Uh, the planet's warming up. I don't know. Got to gotta stay cool. Jim Thomas, so looking at 109 here in Anderson. Oh, Jim, uh, hang in there too, buddy. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. Thanks again to both of you for all your support for my channel. Two real serious supporters of mine right there, back to back. Maurice, uh, why are they moving ships out of China? Any update on what is going on, uh, going to be on Norwegian Joy after her dry dock? What is going? On? Well, the Norwegian Joy is moving to Seattle, and it's going to do it's going to do Alaska cruises next summer. Then the Norwegian Joy is going to LA and then a home port out of the Los Angeles port for next winter. That much we know. Um, China has got issues. Uh, the Chinese government is not interested in having its national citizens go to certain ports either in South Korea 
and they've had issues of uh, Chinese nationals going to Japan. Uh, I don't know why. There's there's uh, diplomatic spats. I think part of what is going on is um, there are a certain number of islands in the China Sea that are being claimed by China as traditional Chinese land, and they put a, a runway on it, a bunch of military hardware on it, and then they declare a 200-mile uh, international zone. And uh, any ship in that 200-mile zone, you're in China, get the hell out. And the Japan's going, heck with you guys. Uh, you're not doing that. Uh, you're not going to play that game on us. Uh, we can go wherever the hell we want in the international waters. And that little atoll there, that is not owned by anybody. That's either ours or jointly shared. And this is happening in South Korea. It's happening with the Philippines. It's happening with uh, Vietnam. It's happening with all kinds of nations are in a little tit-for-tat nonsense here. And, of course, the Americans are flying uh, B-52 bombers uh, wherever they want uh, in international waters. And the Chinese are putting up squawk about that. And so tit for tat, tit for tat. And so the Chinese are saying, tourists can't go here. Tourists can't go there. We can control where our tourists go because we are a communist government. We control everything. And so the cruise lines are going, we're in the middle of this. We didn't do anything. We're just, we're just building these beautiful luxury liners uh, to give everybody a wonderful trip. Uh, we, it's not our fault. Uh, but the, the cruise lines are also figuring out, wait a minute, uh, we just dropped a billion bucks to build these gorgeous ships for a market that isn't there anymore. What the hell is that all about? Uh, we're going to get out of there. And so Norwegian is taking the joy out of there. And uh, they're, in, they're bringing in, uh, the what is it, the Norwegian Spirit cruise ship uh, ne year after next. That's the oldest ship in the fleet. So the 20-year-old ship is going in. The brand-new billion-dollar ship is coming out. And uh, for the Chinese market, it ain't as luxurious as it used to be because that's what Norwegian thinks about that market right now. It's not worth their money. It's not worth big money. So they'll honor any commitments they have with Chinese uh, tour operators, <clears throat> port operators by bringing a ship in, uh, but it won't be that billion dollar luxury liner. Uh-uh, not a chance. They were not able to fill that ship to its maximum capacity, which means they're losing money. If you, if you can't fill a ship up over 60, 70%, you are losing money. And uh, Americans and Canadians and Brits and Europeans and everyone are dying to go on luxury cruise ships to places they would like to go, one of which is Alaska. Another one is the Panama Canal, uh, Mexican Riviera cruises, Caribbean cruises. Why not move a billion-dollar asset to these markets and you can charge a premium price once you get that ship settled in a little, while, little bit? And that's why today you want a room on the Bliss. You're not getting a discount deal on the Bliss. There are no deals on the Bliss. Uh, you can't find a $50 a night cruise on the Bliss for the next two years. Um, and so Norwegian is making a lot of money back right now on that, on that ship. They're going to do the same thing with the Joy. They'll put $50 million in, refurbish her, strip the Chinese lingo all out of that thing, and redo the menus, redo the kitchens if you have to. Uh, North Americanize that baby. Instead of having Szechuan delicacies and Mandarin type Chinese delicacy, we're putting in barbecue, baby. We're bringing in the ribs. We're bringing in the pulled pork. Uh, it's going to be good stuff for the North American cruising market. And Europeans who are flying in to take this cruise to Alaska or, or through the Panama Canal, they're going to be exposed to American culture on the Joy cruise ship. And so 50 million bucks can transforms that ship into a North American style, entertaining style liner for the North American market. And Norwegian will start making some nice money off that ship. That's what's going on. That's what's going to happen. And the Chinese have decided that, uh, well, they don't care. Uh, the, the government is, is all encompassing, all powerful. Citizens have no rights. Uh, whatever whatever the, the top guys say goes and no one questions them because if you question them, you disappear. Ah, so there you go. Uh, that's what's happening there. And so the joy is disappearing from China next April. It'll be in Seattle. That's what's going on. Um, what do we got here? Uh, uh, Tammy Ray. Hi, everybody. Hi, Tammy. Tom Henry uh, at Paul Wulgus plus Mount uh, Joy and um, Blue Ball. The namers are not. Uh, I have no idea what he's saying. Uh, Paul Wilkes is laughing as you know what off. Richard C. Richard. Uh, Bruce, where will the princess majestic be ported <clears throat> since it is leaving china also another ship which was built for that country um a richer sea i'm not sure anyone know where the uh, princess majestic was headed 
Um, I'm not sure if that, if was it headed for LA as well for those coastal uh, California cruises. Uh, I know one of them was Michelle Lucas Paradise California. It's hotter than a snake's, you know what, in a covered wagon. <laughs> snake's butt. How about that? I'll just I'll just uh, lingo that. Uh, I'll PG that little comment. Uh, <laughs> oh, hang in there, Michelle. Just hang in there. Ed Tolleson, uh, I am looking for someone that can help me find a 14-day cruise, I guess, from a port in the U.S. for a reasonable price in January 2020 for under $2,2500 total for the cruise with port fees and gratuities. Uh well, uh, uh, Ed, uh, tell me uh, or tell us, um, where do you want to go? Are you looking at a uh, repositioning cruise across the Atlantic? Are you are thinking of a, of a cruise out of the U.S. to Alaska and back? Are you thinking of a cruise from the U.S. to Australia, maybe? Are you thinking of a cruise in the Caribbean, a Mexican cruise? What do you got in mind? Um, and are you talking, when you talk 2,000 to 2,500, are you talking for both people? And are you saying all in? Because uh, if you're doing that, you're telling me you're willing to spend $1,250 a person, com complete fee. You're telling me that we're going to have to figure out taxes and fees, tipping, uh, and then the base fare to see if we can get you under that level. And I'm going to tell you, you are looking at several options still. Uh, certainly Caribbean cruises, a uh, good number of them will be that uh, will be under that. Um, some, some Alaska cruises will come into that. Uh, with the Joy now moving to Alaska, and uh, perhaps other ships coming in as the time goes by, that market may get, become a little more over, oversaturated. There might be more deals there. <clears throat> Mexican Riviera, maybe there are deals because the joy will now be part of it. The panorama is coming for Carnival, bigger ship, 4,000 passengers a week instead of about 20-something hundred. They have a ship there for now. Um, yeah, you might be able to get some pretty good deals there, uh, but I need to know what you have in mind. Oh, I will be traveling solo. He's saying, this is for yourself on your own? Uh, $2,500 on your own. Uh, I, I can't imagine why you would have to spend that much. Uh, uh, even if you, uh, you know, you look on, on, uh, vacations to go.com for cruise deals. Even if you took an inside room that was de designed for two, if the cruise is $400 a person, it's 800 bucks for you. Base fare. You only pay taxes and fees for yourself and you pay the tipping just for yourself. That's well under, uh, twelve, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500. I mean, you're not even, not even close to 2000 uh, you shouldn't have any trouble at it all here. Uh, Robert Brent at Traveling with Bruce. The construction rule here is it takes three times as long as it would in the States. I uh, totally agree with that, Robert. That is, that's the same as in the Cayman Islands where I used to live. Uh, in the Cayman Islands, they had a hurricane come through. I think it was Mitch, I think it was called. This is about 2000 and about two or three. Uh, it devastated a big chunk of the Cayman Islands, flooded almost everybody. And, um, uh, Oh, yeah, it took a long time, but the, the island, the Cayman Islands, had a lot of dough to rebuild. Um, the, uh, there's a pretty high standard of living in the Cayman Islands, but yeah, two to three times longer, I believe it. Brittany Lockwood, the city in which my college is, is, uh, how do you pronounce it? T Tai Bai Do. Uh, so she, it, it's pronounced, it looks like it's spelled Thibo Dao, but it's Tai, tai Bai Do or T Bai Do. And uh, Brittany, uh, I think you're going to have a good time in college. Um, Robert Brandt at Traveling with Bruce. Most people have to wait for an insurance check before they can even plan to rebuild. And those companies have been slow writing checks. Robert, uh, you nailed it right on the head there. Absolutely, you've nailed it. And for a businessman, that's death. It's just death. There's no cash flow. Uh, for, pre for average people, it's bad enough, of course. Um, you're absolutely right. And I'm sure there are horror stories all over the island regarding insurance claims. Uh, you know, the insurance company says, oh, no, that, that wasn't caused by a hurricane. That was caused by water. You're not covered for water. Oh, you mean the water that the hurricane brought me? Uh, that water? Uh, yeah. Oh, I know. It's just ridiculous. Um, uh, uh, Nina is saying pronounced Nana. Thank you, Nana. <laughs> Thank you for helping me there because uh, I have a short memory and uh, it's a good one, but short. Thank you so much. Brittany Lockwood. Uh, it is more of a town than a city compared to Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Interesting uh, stuff. Uh, uh, it, sh it should be a pretty cool place when you get there. Cool Jazz. Hello, Bruce. 79 here in the Apple. Humid and overcast. Welcome, Cool Jazz. Randy Lucas, uh, uh, Thomas Henry. He's laughing. Uh, Brittany Lockwood. Another way, if I could give a pronunciation of Tibro, 
is G and H is silent, and the E A U X sounds like a long O. There you go. Uh, I'll just call your college the T College. You know, she's going to T real soon. Uh, Sylvia, hello from Greensboro, 83, cloudy and muggy. Oh, man, that weather is prevalent everywhere. D and G explores. The boys are here afternoon at work, but wanted to say hi real quick. Hi, guys. We're going on that video. That video is going to the air an hour after this show is over. I've got it already teed up, ready to go. Uh, so I'm going to line this show up, get all the work done, and then I'll press the button to get that one started. So check the video tonight on uh, on my channel, and I hope you like what I did to it. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, China is just getting too big. Um, Maurice, if a ship moves from the USA to China, uh, does she have to be in dry dock before she goes to China? Very good question. Um, I would say it would be a damn good idea. Um, um, I would I would say from a mar a marin mariner. <laughs> let's say it this way from a marine law kind of angle i would say so yes uh marine law um maurice i would say that if a ship is being moved from the u.s market to the chinese market the cruise line will make sure that there are staff there's staff on board especially in the bridge and engineering that are uh, fluent in in uh, mandarin chinese and other languages in the area filipino vietnamese uh, chinese japanese south korean because you're entering ports uh, and you have to adhere to their rules, their laws. You want to have staff on board that know what the hell they're doing. And so, uh, uh, Maurice, not only will the ship be, uh, you know, converted, the staff will be modifi modified as well. These are the things behind the scenes we don't get to see that we don't generally know about. Because what do we have to care about? We just, we're just going to an exotic place and enjoy ourselves. Um, same thing with airplanes. Uh, when a uh, when an airliner is coming into uh, Germany or France or Spain, it would help if the uh, the the uh, tower and the pilots can speak a similar language. Now, thankfully, in the uh, airline business, uh, the uh, the uh, common language in the airline business is universally English, uh, but it can be another language, of course. But um, on the ground, you've got to have uh, the ability to communicate with the folks at the airport on the ground to look after your plane. So, if you're the captain. And you want servicing done to your aircraft, you're going to have to make sure your airline has people in, in place that can handle English and the local language and know the local contractors and customs and so on. And they do. Uh, American knows. United knows what they're doing. Emirates knows that in, uh, in Dubai, they can do things there. But in Atlanta, they got to do things the Atlanta way. In L.A., they got to be available to handle things in the U.S. It's just the way it is. Cheers from Traveling with Bruce to everybody today. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, sea Keeper, really, um, uh, Ed Tollison, uh, 14 days U.S. port, January 2020, 20, 2,500, including port fees and gratuities and traveling solo, as they say at McDonald's, would like some fries with that. Good luck with all that. Well, I, I don't think he'd have a problem. I really don't think he'd have a problem with that. I uh, I think that kind of a budget is wide open for him. I'm afraid you may be right, Sea Keeper, he's thinking. But there are some some pretty close. Ed Tolson, I want to start and end in the U.S. You want to start and end in the U.S.? Yeah, you want a round trip out of Miami maybe or something like that? I can't see why you can't find a deal. <clears throat> Look at the MSC Seaside right now. MSC Seaside is offering a balcony for, what, 600 bucks a person, 550 with a drink package. You can get that balcony for yourself. Double pay that darn thing. It's $1,100. You got the whole balcony. What? What's the big deal? I don't understand how you can't find a cruise as a solo for a good price. I, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at a loss here. Um, here's Richard C. saying, I would try the MSC ship with all the deals. <laughs> Wendy, Wendy Thompson, does Ed want air uh, to or, or, or on, on top of all that? I, I don't know. I don't know. Rob Souter, greetings from uh, Genesco, New York, 82 degrees. Welcome, Rob, to the show. Staying cool and, and, and staying dry. Uh, uh, stay in the basement where it's warmer or cooler. The end of that humidity. Ed Tolson, no, no, I will pay the air, he says. Okay, Paul Wilgus, uh, and Ed Jr., you could easily do a seven-day for that, but a 14-day, it, it might be hard. And if that's what you're after, a 14-day, if, if I'm misreading this, I will I will apologize right now. But even so, 14 days? Uh, I've been telling you guys uh, for weeks uh, about the uh, deals this past summer out of Vancouver, British Columbia, or Seattle to uh, Alaska. Um, you can get a one week up from Vancouver to Anchorage and then a one week back from Anchorage inside room was like $400, $375 a person. Uh, that's two weeks each way. So $750 for a person multiplied by 
by two because you're single, that's fifteen hundred dollars plus your tips and your taxes. You're still under two grand, I'm sure. It'd be close, but you got two weeks. Alaska, that might be a way to go. Now it's an inside room. It's not a balcony. Uh, you know, if a balcony is what you want, maybe a little harder to find. But I'm just you know spitballing here. Uh, Paul Wilgus, uh, you could easily do seven days for that. Fourteen might be hard. Ed uh, is going. I will look into MSC. Thanks, D and G. It's 104 here in Madeira, California. Hang in there, guys. Brittany Lockwood, Majestic Princess, could be heading to Australia for its home port. I'm trying to find out. Robert Brandt uh, at Brittany. Those French name uh, like Bordeaux is pronounced Bordeaux. Uh, Seakeeper, uh, Thibodeau. Simple as that. Trust me, Thibodeau. And uh, Seakeeper would know. Uh, MG Toe is here. Star Cruises, which is all over Asia, just took delivery of a new ship. And... Uh, they are a big cruise company that you don't hear about. Yeah, Star Cruises, I believe, are they, they're owned by Genting, G-E-N-T-I-N-G. Genting is a uh, rather large entity. And at one time, about 15 years ago, about, give or take, I'm not exactly accurate here, but uh, Genting uh, owned um, Norwegian, uh, if not all of it, a big chunk of it. Sold off a chunk of it to uh, um, a group, uh, a, a capital investment group, um, called, um, yeah, named after a planet. So there's uh, Venus, there's Mars, there's Earth, <laughs> Jupiter. I'm trying to remember. I'm having trouble coming up with it. Um, they they sold off uh, a chunk of it to this group, and they uh, they uh, then took it public and funded it and saved Norwegian from going under. Again, this is 15 years ago, a long time ago. Genting is now almost not even owning anything anymore. They've sold off almost all of their investment. I'm sure they made a lot of money on that deal and they've invested it into Star Cruises. And I just did read Genting has made a deal with the Chinese government for some kind of cruising arrangement of some kind. These contracts get announced and I don't even know what they mean. They're, they're, they call them like letters of understanding. I think what we're talking about here in lingo and in, in common speak um, the Chinese government saying, yeah, we're kicking out the Americans and we'll bring you in because you're from Hong Kong and uh, you'll handle the Chinese market and screw the Americans. That's how I interpret it, but that's not the way they say it. <laughs> just don't be mad at me. I'm just kind of, you know, speculating on what's going on. Uh, Genting has deep pockets. They've got ships on order. They want the Chinese market. China wants a Chinese company that does that market that they can control. They can control Genting. They're there. So anyway, we'll see what happens. Okay, uh, MG Toe, they search baggage when people disembark because the Chinese pocket everything that is not tied down. They are thieves. Well, MG's back. MG Toe is back. That's the MG I know. Uh, Brittany Lockwood, I am searching the internet for the answer. Robert Brandt, MG Toe, I'm sure the luggage and even cabin searches are things we'd never allow. MG Toe, when I went to Asia, three quarters of my stuff was stolen when I got back to the <laughs> Richard C., the Princess Majestic, is the new ship that was built for the Chinese market. Ship was launched in 17 and will need to be ported to uh, change to European market. Yeah, it'll be, it'll have to be dry dock. Noel Freas, you must have been, uh, okay, here, here we go. Okay, we got it. We got one. We got, we haven't had one in a long time, Noel. We haven't had a long, we haven't had a guy like you in a long time. Welcome to the show and well. You know, goodbye. And Jordan, uh, greetings, Bruce, and all. It's 25 in, in Brisbane today. Looking forward to the new video. Ah, yes, tonight, one hour after the show. D&G, awesome. Really excited for the video. Robert Brandt, hi, Ann. Wes Morrison, hello, Ann. MG Toe, the new ships usually come to the States because it is where the market is located. Yeah, everyone wants to be in the uh, on a new ship at, in the States. Absolutely. That's where the big money is. Those greenback dollars are loved universally by everybody. Robert Brandt, I wonder what airports lose the most luggage. I, You know, that's a good question, sir. Paro D is here, been hanging out in the background while cooking dinner. <laughs> Hope everyone's having a great day from Jay. Hi there. Uh, what's for dinner? Uh, and uh, we're going on that video an hour after this show. Okay. Thank you. Also, Paro D is in the video, folks. Uh, I'm just about to release the names of all the, the, the channels that were part of this show, uh, this video. And Paro D, uh, they, it was a lot of fun. They, they were just great. Really loved your, your clips. Thank you so much for helping me out. I loved it. And Jordan, morning at D&G. And Jordan, morning Robert, morning Wes. Anne is the official greeter of the channel here. Richard C., hello, uh, MG Doe. Hello, Anne Gordon. Uh, uh, Anne Jordan, uh, let's see. Everyone else saying hi, 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 hi. Let's get going here. MG Toe Cunard just announced a big sale. That's right, they did. Um, uh, Anne Jordan's good Good morning, Paro D. D&G is saying hi, Anne. 
Tom Henry, hi, Ann. I was just wondering if you overslept because <laughs> this show starts at 4 in the morning uh, Australia time for her. Uh, it's probably now, what is it now? Uh, uh, yeah, 4.41 uh, in the morning. It's early over there. Uh, Mercury, thank you, Jim Thomas. Oh, you read, you're reading my mind. It's Mercury Investments that bailed out Norwegian with Genting. They bailed out Norwegian, brought a bunch of dough into that company, took it public, raised a bunch more, and Norwegian is what they are today because of Mercury Investments. And slowly, Genting and Mercury have been pulling their investments out, getting their money out, making profit. And the company is now widely held by investment funds, pension funds, and that type of thing. Tom Henry, uh, Robert Brent, good idea for next trivia. Um, let's see here, MG Toe. Yeah, Richard, especially all the uh, fruitists. Fruit, 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 I can't pronounce it. Uh, and Jordan, good morning. Uh, cool Jazz, uh, Robert Brandt, Miami Airport might be the answer, or JFK. Uh, cool Jazz, good morning, at and Jordan. There you go. Okay, let me say hi, or let me say thank you, and announce who's in this video for um, this, uh, this collaboration video I've put together. When you check it out later tonight, you're going to see Don Terrace from Don's Family Vacations. Don, I want to thank you. I don't know if you're watching. Uh, you're a busy, busy, pretty busy guy, so you're probably not watching here. But Don, uh, Don and I, we've been talking back and forth via email for a little while, trying to get together. And, uh, and uh, Don uh, uh, got an email from me. I asked if he could help out, and he responded within a half an hour. I got lucky. He, he happened to catch the message. He fired me back and messaged, yeah, I'd love to do something with you. That sounds like a great idea. I told him what the premise of the video was. What do you want me to do? I told him what I needed him to do. And within an hour, I had his clips. <laughs> That's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's what I try to do if I ever get asked for something. I just try to get it off right now, get it done, and fire it in there. I was so happy about that. And uh, Emma at uh, Emma Cruises from the United Kingdom is also in the uh, show. Uh, Emma uh, runs a, a channel over there. She's a blogger, or a blogger and a vlogger, and she travels on cruise ships uh, out of the UK. She's uh, young. Uh, she uh, Her mon mantra is uh, cruising isn't just for old people, and I think it's just delightful. I'm delighted she was able to uh, participate in the video as well. Did a great job, and I look forward to meeting her someday. And then there's JND from Pero DJ. Uh, uh, we met in, indirectly through uh, another uh, uh, YouTuber, which is Lalito Loca. You folks know my regulars. You know I did a video on Lalito Loca a few about a month ago uh, about the cruise wars. I was in there. Well, Pero DJ, they were in there as well, and uh, that's how I found them. So I just contacted them directly and asked if they'd be interested. They said, "Yeah, we'd love to do something with you." They remembered me through uh, through the uh, cruise wars. And that's how we met. And so someday I will meet them in person as well. And if they ever want to do a collab, they all they got to do is ask. I'd love, I'd love to be involved. Uh, then there's Kevin and Frank cruising with wheels. They're in the show too. They're in the video tonight. Uh, love those two guys. Lots of fun. And uh, they were more than happy to participate and put a clip together for me, a couple of clips. And uh, and uh, I had fun with their with their clips as well. So thank you, Kevin and Frank, as well for your involvement in the show and uh, and the video. I think it'll be kind of fun when everyone sees it. Sharon, Jamie, and Matthew from Sharon at Sea. Special shout out to you guys. They are also in my collaboration video. Uh, they also responded and said, yeah, well, that'd be a great idea. We'd love to be involved with that. And they, they cranked out a couple of clips for me and uh, we put them on there. And then I have a Derek and Greg, D&G Explorers. They're here right now. They're in the video tonight, uh, and thanks, you guys, for coming on, um, and I'm looking forward to uh, working with you again. I hope you enjoy your, your, your part of the show. And then Tony and Jenny from uh, La Lido Loca, I got them in there as well. I contacted them and said, would you like to be in this video? They said, yeah, that'd be great. They just got back from their Princess Cruise. I know how tired they are because uh, cruising is exhausting. Uh, they've been so busy with their uh, posting of all their videos from the ship, the cruise that they were on, and uh, they took the time to put a clip together for me. I really appreciated it, and uh, I just got it all done. So there you go. Don's Family Vacations, Emma Cruises, Pero DJ, Cruising with Wheels, Sharon at Sea, D&G Explorers, La Lido Loca, all kinds of them, and we're all in the video together, uh, and uh, I was editing it all day today. I was working on it yesterday already, and I'm quite looking forward to having you folks see it later today. So I hope everyone enjoys it, and we'll see how it does. Um, 
let's see your cool uh, uh, cool jazz good morning and, and jordan uh let's see your uh uh, Richard C. Maybe Tesla will build an electric boat. Robert Brandt at Cool Jazz, the place I used to have a horrible time with. Misplaced luggage was Atlanta. These guys are comparing airports that lose the most luggage. Uh, Pooza Studios is here. Hey there, traveling with Bruce. Good to be here again. How you guys doing? Welcome to the channel today. We've got to do something sometime on a collaboration video. Ed Schick is here. Uh, never check luggage and you'll never have a problem. There you go, Ed. Yes, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> right on, buddy. Absolutely. The trick is getting through the check-in counter with your carry-on and hope that they don't bug you about it and that you can get through there and get on the on the plane with it. Absolutely. Cool jazz at Robert Brandt. Hartsfield was good to me. Robert Brandt, I'm losing uh, in losing at Cool Jazz. You uh, uh, Richard C's taken off. See you, Richard C. Robert Brandt, love Jenny and Tony at Lolito Loca. Cool jazz at Robert Brandt. No in, in, no in being there when I arrived, the... But then they, again, I was always the head carry on left. I, I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, cool Jazz and Robert are having a deep discussion about checking luggage and whatnot. Um, <laughs> Wendy Thompson, so tiring. We all go back. Uh, Tom Henry, uh, did Beaner get to Vegas yet? I think it's today. He should be there. And Kat is here. Yipes, I, might, I may have to go through there uh, in October, um, wherever that is. Welcome, Kat, to the show. I'm glad you're here. Um, yeah, we had some fun with this collaboration video. I hope you guys enjoy it tonight. The only news I had today, uh, wasn't all that much today. I found a couple of little things, a Viking, uh, the Viking cruise line, uh, the ocean cruise line, they've signed a contract with a shipbuilder for two more ships. No surprise here. They announced their intentions months ago. Uh, Viking is bringing out a new cruise ship almost every nine months, uh, 930 passengers per ship, uh, 745 feet long. Um, uh, two to one pa passenger to crew ratio, high six star service, top notch food, great cruise line. Two more ships have been officially signed for and will be built. Uh, Brittany, I don't fly uh, Delta, she says. Brittany says luggage issues. Uh, Cat Rose, uh, Atlanta, she's she's got weary of Atlanta. Sea Keeper, dinner time is upon us. Got to go. See you later. See you, Sea Keeper. Ed Tolleson, can Don's family vacations help me book a cruise or does he serve only Canada? I don't know. You're going to have to talk to him. I think he can probably help you. Um, you may want to get him a message. Um, I think you can reach him through uh, through his channel. Uh, there might be an email in his channel that uh, that would be in the about section. You can probably direct him. Uh, Robert Brandt is the worst. It's the worst to arrive somewhere and you have no clothes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when the emperor has no clothes, it doesn't look good, does it? Uh, no. Um, and Wendy Thompson wants to know what you're baking. <laughs> Whoever's baking, what are you baking? Uh, yeah, you don't want to arrive in an airport without clothes. My, uh, my wife, Jennifer and I, we had that happen to us. Uh, I believe that was in, uh, oh my gosh, where was that now? Was that in uh, LA or whatever? We landed once, no luggage and went to the baggage thing. And, uh, but about six hours later it was delivered to our hotel. No issues, no problem, but it can happen. Uh, it can, and it can be a pain. That's why with a carry on, whether you're flying just to, for a day or two or three <clears throat> or one week vacation, <clears throat> or you're taking a cruise. Your carry-on is everything. You want to have in your carry-on all your meds, all your valuables, uh, all your bathroom stuff, uh, a day's change of clothing. Um, you really want to be on top of that. All of your uh, electrical plug-in stuff, you want to have with you in the carry-on so that when you get to where you're going, you got your basics and all the other underwear and all the other socks and all the pants and all the dresses and everything. They'll come. They'll come. But you're good for a 24-hour window, and hopefully that's enough. So I'm crossing my fingers. But it's not always – doesn't always work that way. Sometimes luggage takes two or three days or longer. Well, then you're scrambling. And uh, theoretically, the airline should be compensating you for that inconvenience. You have to bring it up. Dylan LaRue is here. Hi, everybody. Hello, everyone. Sitting at 121 degrees, going on a round trip flights from uh, SMF to Boston in the first week of October, uh, 121 in Henderson, Nevada. I know that's where he is. Unbelievable. Sorry. He's saying, uh, sorry, sorry, I misread that. Going going to the pool, and it turns out I work for the same company that owns Norwegian. <laughs> Dylan works for the same company that owns Norwegian. How about that? You should be getting discounts, uh, employee discounts, buddy. Kat was saying, been trying to find good deals on round-trip flights from SMF to Boston in the first week of October. That's what she is saying. Um, are you talking about, uh, is that San Diego's airport, um, SMF, to Boston, first week of October? Um JetBlue might be a way to uh, get a deal. I'm not sure from the SMF airport or not, but
but uh, it's worth a look. Uh, Southwest, problem with Southwest, if you're going from east to from west to east, coast to coast, you're not going to get a nonstop flight. You're going to have to do the hop, skip, and jump over. Might be economically viable, but it might not be enjoyable. Uh, yeah, can't. I'm not sure. DNG Explorers, thank you, Bruce. We are honored to be part of this. Uh, I'm glad you were part of it too. Brittany Lockwood, Southwest is an airline choice for most of my immediate family members. I'm not sure. I am not sure about uh, this airport, about Sacramento. Oh, it's about Sacramento. Eh, is Sacramento the airport? Uh, yeah, Sacramento to Boston. Um, that could be tough, nonstop, or what have you. Sacramento might mean you are going to need to fly southwest to Denver and then Denver to, oh, wow. I don't know where southwest will take it. They got a month, a bunch of hubs, Midway, Nashville. Um, I don't know. And then Boston? I'm not sure. Uh, MG2, I know Bruce uh, like British Airlines, but to me, it's the worst airline I've been on. And Bruce does not like Canada, but okay, Canada, Air Canada, but Canada Air or Air Canada is the best airline I've ever been on. Uh, we in Canada, we we kind of hate Air Canada. <laughs> we just, you know, it's gone under a couple times. We taxpayers bail it out all the time, you know. Then they come back for more. SMF is Sacramento. Thank you, Randy. I I, I just figured that out. Um, yeah, Sacramento uh, to Boston. Kind of tricky to get a direct flight, uh, for sure. Um, say La uh, San Francisco to Boston. Yeah uh <clears throat> seattle boston portland boston <clears throat> maybe denver boston i'm sure so you might have to be sacramento to denver denver to boston on whatever uh and then back uh, you'll have to check into this one a little combination might have to be done here west morrison another suggestion about luggage would be to put some of your clothes in your spouse's suitcase just in case uh one of the suitcases are delayed uh yes uh, uh i find that um uh, Wes, I find that uh, my wife and I go with uh, a carry-on each, and then we go with one or two suitcases, and I find that the uh, uh, the two suitcases, uh, three quarters of all that area is my wife's. <laughs> so I guess if we split it, I'd get one eighth of one and one eighth of the other, and she'd be all good, right? But a happy wife makes for a happy life. So, you know, there you go. Robert Brent, I vote Emirates. Oh, I do too. Uh, I, I would love to fly Emirates. Uh, MG Toe, I find JetBlue to be very rude and the attendants are no, are know-it-alls, uh, uh, that kind of stuff. I, I, don't, I, I was on JetBlue, I think once, had an okay flight, met Don King. Uh, Don King, the boxing promoter. You know, the guy with the hair that stands straight up? He was on the flight, first seat, uh, got on the plane first and uh, people were walking by saying hi to him. He's saying hi to everybody. Very polite, very nice guy. He brags and he holds his hand over his heart and, and is grateful for the fact that he has for, I don't know how many years, 10, 20 years in a row, he has personally paid and he makes no bones about it. He doesn't hide this. He has personally paid more than a million dollars a year in personal income tax to the United States government every year for like 20 years. And he's happy to do it because he loves the country. There you go. See how much, think about how much he gets to keep. If he's paying that much, he's got a good account and he's doing all right. Anyway, there you go. But he was flying JetBlue. So, uh, you know, I don't know, whatever. Maybe that's why Maybe that's why he's doing so well. It's flying JetBlue. Uh, Brittany, con continuation of my last comment, uh, the rest of my family. Uh, Dylan, I fly Virgin Alaska, best airline ever. There you go. Cat Rose, I know. Wendy Thompson, you can uh, UPS your luggage to the hotel the night before your cruise. It's true, you can't. Robert Brandt, Virgin is very good. And Jordan, thank, uh, thank you. Uh, cool Jazz, Bruce loves Porter. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> I don't think so. Uh, Kate, Kat, last time was uh, from uh, uh, Sacramento to LAX. LAX to Boston on the way back was Boston to Atlanta, Atlanta to SMF on Delta. Oh, my gosh, those connections. MG Toe, ooh, uh, have you tried FBN Air? That's fly-by-night air. Uh, <laughs> cool. Ed Schick, um, uh, as a former ramp employee at the airport, trust me, carry on only. Uh, if it don't, if it don't fit in there, it don't go. Uh, if it absolutely has to go and doesn't fit, ship it ahead of time. There you go. Ed, wise advice to the masses. Thank you, Ed, for that. Wes Morrison, if you are flying, uh, Southwest air, uh, their hubs are Phoenix, Houston, H Hobie, Dallas, LaField. Yes. Uh, and then, of course, they, they uh, you know, you can connect at, at a myriad of other airports, obviously, with the Southwest as well. Uh, but, yeah, Southwest sometimes, uh, ha or has been in the past, a pretty good deal. 
The only other news I had today that I was going to tell you guys about was uh, Hong Kong. Hong Kong passenger uh, counts are uh, rising quite nicely. Um, Hong Kong had 708,000 passengers get on and get off cruise ships from Hong Kong, home porting Hong Kong uh, in 2000, uh, uh, 2016, last two years ago. Uh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago, in, in 2007, it was only 133,000. So that's up from 133 to 708. During the 2009 financial collapse, uh, it went down to 100,000 for a year. But uh, today, 708,000 people home ported uh, Hong Kong. But total number of passengers, total number of, pa of cruise ship passengers going through Hong Kong last year, 1,700,000. So a million passengers were day visitors uh, over the year in Hong Kong for 2017. And Hong Kong is aggressively trying to get more business. But with the Chinese government doing what it's doing, don't know if that's going to continue on or not. Too much interference coming from the policy, political sides of things. And we don't know how that will fare. I will tell as, uh, as we go down the road. Anyway, there you have it. That was the news of the day I had there. But the big news of the day is the video, the collaboration video is coming out after this show is over. Looking forward to releasing it. Hope you guys will enjoy it. Wes Morrison saying, if you are flying Southwest, uh, yeah, here, here's that comment again, sorry, uh, Phoenix, Houston, uh, Hobie, Dallas, uh, Rob Souter flew Air Rude once, just once, uh, Air Rude, are you talking Air Canada? He only flew Air Canada one time and just once, is that what you're saying? I don't know, which which one do you mean? <laughs> I, I have to be fair to Air Canada, the last flight I took to Europe was Air Canada, I escorted my mother to Germany, uh, we flew Air Canada from Calgary to Frankfurt, nonstop and back. And uh, we were on an A330 aircraft, wide, long. We were at the back. But I uh, picked two seats at the back of the plane where the plane just started to, to, to narrow. At the very tail, it starts to come in a bit. And just ahead of us, the, uh, the uh, rows went uh, three across, uh, four across, three across. And our row, it was two, three, and two. And so it was my mother and I in two seats on window. And in front of us were three seats. And we had a little more room, just a little more, a little easier room. Uh, and beside us, there were three instead of four people, and then two on the other side. And behind us were two and three and two again. We weren't the very last row, we were the second last row. It worked out very well. Uh, we had no trouble. The bathrooms were right there. There were like uh, three, two, two, four bathrooms behind us. So we had easy access to those. And uh, could get up and stretch your legs, just walk in the galley area there. Fantastic. The uh, staff, very nice. Very, very good staff. They were easygoing. Didn't mind if you got up, stretch your legs back there. Quite happy to help you let you do that. And uh, we didn't run out of food. Lots of food on the plane. Lots of cola. No problem with anything like that. Had a pleasant flight there. Pleasant flight back and a wonderful trip. So no complaints. Um, let's see here uh, wendy thompson our last southwest airlines trip was st louis to orlando and orlando back to st louis no check bags and very early time to fly if you're going early it's on time you're going during the middle of the day late part of the day you might be delayed because the, the flights kind of stack up on each other cat rose uh, though coach uh cross country was very painful oh i can imagine it would be five hours at least plus the connections that is a long day cat uh uh, sometimes it just pays to pay a little more, but the problem is if you can't get a direct flight, you can't get a direct flight. Uh, where you are is where you are, and you have to deal with it. Uh, it can be a bit of a uh, an issue. Um, I would, like I said, I wouldn't mind flying Emirates uh, anytime. I would love to get on an Emirates flight. I keep looking at deals where you can fly from, say, uh, North America to Dubai, and then uh, after a few days of hanging out there, you fly Dubai anywhere you want to go. You go to Europe and back or uh, go to Europe and back over, say, several weeks, and then use Dubai as your hub, and from there go to, say, Sydney, Australia, or Melbourne, or Auckland, New Zealand, and then back to Dubai, hang out again a few more days, then go over to uh, Hong Kong, or Singapore, or Tokyo, Beijing, Shanghai, whatever you want to do, back to Dubai, and then back to uh, the United States. Um, if you do that through Emirates, they'll give you a heck of a good deal. You can get in some cases, depending on the time of year, you can get flights from, say, uh, Los Angeles to Dubai, Dubai to, you name the European city, Hamburg, Paris, Frankfurt, London, Vienna, Zurich, Rome, Barcelona. 
uh, back to Dubai, uh, spend as long as you want, whatever you want. And then uh, from there to Hong Kong, back to Dubai, and then eventually back to the US to LAX, you get a, that deal, uh, $400 a flight will be your price. 400 bucks a flight on average. And you're taking six flights, that's $2,400. Now that is a deal of deals. It's economy, okay, they're all nonstop flights, practically all A380 or brand new 777s. Emirates flies the newest planes in the sky. Um, you'll have a fantastic uh, uh, a fantastic entertainment system in the seat back in front of you, even in economy, and you get real meals. Um, no baggage fees, uh, low airport taxes. It's something to consider if you ever want to do something like that. I would love to do that, absolutely. Um, uh, Cat <laughs> Rose saying turbulence, so no walking around. You don't want that. And Jordan, a big thank you to all who collaborated on this amazing video. Uh, local fam uh, Sh Sharon at C D and G Dawn, uh, cruising with wheels, uh, PSA Studios, Emma, all you guys rock. Thanks for all your great info. Cat's uh, going wow. Uh, Kate Rose, Cat Rose, I'm going to try for at least a step up from economy. Uh, yeah, that uh, if you can do uh, premium economy, that would be better. The thing I think about is if I could do an Emirates flight like that from uh, from L.A. to Dubai, Dubai to Europe. Of course, I would have the card. I would have their Sky Awards card. I would be piling up the points. And the hope is that after a, a routine like that, that not too far down the road, the next flight or the night, the flight after that might be an upgrade flight to business class, and that would be a treat. For, uh, for a guy like me to try something like that. I'd love to do something like that. Uh, I love it. I also always think about around the world travel. I'd love to travel around the world on a dedicated deal where I would go from, say, LA to, to Dubai, maybe, to Dubai up to uh, Europe and travel through Europe, back to Dubai, then continue on, and uh, maybe maybe go to South Africa, Cape Town, back to Dubai. Then from Dubai uh, over to uh, perhaps Australia, uh, uh, stay a month, come back to Dubai, rest for a week, boom, over to Asia, do some traveling around Asia, and then catch a one-way flight from Hong Kong to Los Angeles or uh, Tokyo, Los Angeles or whatever, and that completes the round-the-world flight. The last leg can't be Emirates. That's the problem. Emirates cannot fly you from Hong Kong to Los Angeles directly. They they are not allowed to do that, but a Cathay Pacific or China Air or United or whatever, you complete your round-the-world trek by landing in L.A., and you've circumvented the globe over, say, three, four months, a casual uh, trip, that would be something. R rather than doing something in like a week, you know, that's just pointless. You're just, you're just grinding yourself to a pulp for no good reason. But if you can do three, four, or five months of a trip like that, boy, I'd be interested. Now, if you could arrange a couple of cruises in these spots, you know, you get to, uh, get to Dubai, take a cruise from Dubai for a week, and then you get to uh, Australia, and you're in Australia on land for a while, and then you take a cruise to uh, New Zealand and back, New Caledonia, maybe something like that. And then you take uh, back to Dubai, then you get a, a flight to uh, to Hong Kong or, or Singapore. You take a cruise, an Asian cruise, and then you fly. On. That would be uh, pretty cool. I'd be interested in something like that for sure. A lot of videos on YouTube, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, any takers, you want to come with me? That would be something. Uh, anyway, I'd love to do something like that. Um, uh, let's go here, uh, Dylan. Dylan saying, can't wait for the collaboration video. That's uh, MG2. That's gr that's great to do something like that. But how much are the hotel costs exactly? Cat, uh, uh, I have no hotel costs on my U. Uh, you, uh, MG is asking. Cat, uh, trip in October, uh, staying at Paris. Right on. And Jordan, love Emirates. Follow them. They are awesome. I I do uh, I do follow that airline. I watch the news all the time. I watch their press releases all the time. I want to see this Dubai airport firsthand. I really want to see this place. This is unbelievable. Um, they are something else. Uh, anyway, there you go. Um, you know, flying is another passion of mine, something I'd like to do more of. Well, how about that? I think I'm going to shut this video down right here and say thank you to everybody. How did I do with my thumbs ups? Are, are you guys giving me thumbs ups today? 30 thumbs ups. Thank you for 30 thumbs ups, you guys. I appreciate that. If you can spare any more, uh, that would be fantastic. I'm going to post this video, and I'm then going to uh, get over to the other video, the collaboration video, and I'm going to post that video, get it up there, and let everybody uh, see what that one is all about. I hope you enjoy it, uh, and I uh, hope it goes over very well. Cat, Cat Rose, who actually lived two hours west of Boston. Her parents live just west of Boston. Ed Tollerson, thanks, Bruce and everyone. Robert Brandt's giving me a bunch of thumbs up, and is, uh, is saying hi, Cat, saying hi. 
thank you everybody for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the show. Hope it didn't bore you today. Um, hope it was engaging enough. And if any of you are thinking of subscribing, there's a button there to subscribe to. There's a button here and the bell notification icon is right beside it. Click on that. You'll be notified every time I do something new. All the YouTubers out there who have been joining me today, great to have you come by and, and spend some time with me. Glad you were here. And thank you for all those YouTubers who collaborated with me on this video. And uh, thank you to the others that I contacted and some who called me back and said, next time, next time, uh, there'll be a more. I am open to collaboration videos with anybody. It would be a lot of fun. Thanks, you guys, so much for watching. All your support, picking up product like this, uh, your donations on PayPal, thank you. And also uh, uh, to YouTube, of course, for this. And Amazon for the uh, um, affiliate marketing link I have on Amazon just below in the description. Thanks for you guys going there and picking up some stuff from time to time. Helps this channel in very different ways all the time. I love it. I appreciate it very much. All right. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying good day, goodbye for now. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. It's Thursday tomorrow. I've got two shows on. I just saw seven thumbs ups come in. We're up to 37 thumbs ups. How's that? Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. I've got two shows, five o'clock and eight o'clock uh, for the trivia show. I look forward to doing both of those with you guys. Enjoy the collaboration video and uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye for now.